Thank you for your time. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Miami. My name is Sunil Thomas. I'm co-founder uh, and now executive chairman of uh, CleverTap. Uh, and you know, we are going to have a little bit of fun with data. Um, and why we are here, CleverTap is an all-in-one user engagement platform. We have, you know, we are integrated in more than 10,000 applications on, on the app stores. We have more than 2,000 paying customers. Uh, we've been in business for like 10 years. And we are an all-in-one user engagement platform that gives you data analytics, uh, segmentation, personalization, messaging, A-B testing, everything you need to essentially engage with your users. Uh, we work with a whole bunch of fintech companies across the world, uh, 100 plus countries. Um, in LATAM, uh, multiple, them, uh, multiple of them. Uh, we also work with actually a bunch of traditional banks. So it's kind of interesting that we are in the, in the middle of seeing this uh, transformation uh, from traditional banking uh, to fintech. And like Dries pointed out, for those who attended the previous session, you know, this is, this is not a different thing. You know, this will all come together in ways that we don't uh, imagine today in some ways. So let's start with LATAM FinTech. You know, this is a, a massive market. It's $70 billion and growing exceptionally uh, fast. Uh, three times, three times that is growth rate compared to traditional banks, uh, traditional banking um, across FinTech in LATAM. There's 40%, you know, the opportunity here is massive. 40% of the population is under 25 years old. And if you look at the last stat, 60% of the total population is unbanked. So the potential here for fintech, traditional banks, no matter what you think about it, is massive in LATAM. The number of 2,500, about 2,482, is the number of fintech companies today, only in Latin America. It's more than twice of what it was like a couple of years ago. Um, and so it's a huge, huge market that, that there is massive opportunity if you are in that space. Now, the interesting thing is 75% of all of these companies will fail within the next 10 years. That's three out of four companies. You know? So there is, uh, we know today's economy, 72%, there is re reduced funding for startups over last year again. Uh, and you know, even the public fintech companies have declined tremendously in stock value. There's a lot of layoffs, we know this. So essentially, three out of four companies will fail. Um, so let's use the data that we see now going forward to see how, you know, how you can be in that top 25%, how you can be a fintech application that survives through the next uh, decade, essentially. And, you know, the, the truth here is that there is, there is no magic pill to how you can solve the problem. The, the, the reality of every fintech app is to really understand user needs, is to hyper-personalize user experiences, is to delight your customers by launching new products at high velocity and, you know, be, be secure by design. So there is, there is no magic pill. And, and, and we'll see some rates and we'll see how systematically by applying these processes, you can improve you know, what, what goes on success of your app. And it really comes down to really providing a superlative customer experience for your users. If you broadly break down the life cycle, a user life cycle in, in FinTech, it comes down to three things. It's the activation process, and that is important. It's probably the most important thing. After you get a download of the app, how can you get that user to register with you? So going from an anonymous user to a registered user or to a customer is by far the most important sort of step that, that you can help, um, that you can take towards your own success of your app. Then, of course, you come into sort of transactions. You know, you, you, you come into doing what the app is supposed to do. You're either moving money, you're making payments, you're, you're transferring money, you're doing all kinds of things. And, and no matter what the type of transaction is in that FinTech app, you want people, to, you want your users to do more and more of them. And then of course you, you maximize engagement. You want your users to come in daily into the app. You want your users to do, uh, to sort of buy other things or you know, use the services that you are launching more and more. So 
So three big phases, and it's important to understand some of these data points in these three phases, and we'll see how you can affect or improve these data points too. So let's start with augmenting activations. Like I said, turning anonymous users into registered users is your biggest lever. I mean, the moment you have a registered user, you can reach out to that user even outside of the app. You can you know, email, you can send text messages, you can do all kinds of different things. Um, and, and it becomes your hook towards uh, increasing lifetime value of your users. So let's see what happens with data. So, you know, this is across the board uh, for Latin America. One out of five customers only sign up after activation. So it's only one out of every five customers who download it, sign up to your app. So if you think about it from a cost of acquisition point of view, it's like it's, it's not the cost per download, but it's the cost per registered user gives you a much better metric because uh, an anonymous user is really not reachable. You just cannot do anything much with that person. Um, and you, you, if you can make it two out of five, right, from this one out of five, you are like doubling your chances towards success. So essentially, how do you get users who download to, uh, to you know, sign up for your app? And, and there's a lot of education involved. There is, there, is, uh, there is a comfort level that you provide to these users when they first see your app, uh, an ease of interface. It's, it's, not, it's not complicated. It is, it is simple. Um, and, and it's inviting, really, is what you can do uh, for your new users. So a lot of user design comes in. But a lot of messaging, education, uh, informatics, you know, things like that uh, come into this. But again, remember, one out of five, if you run an app, um, and if you are getting more than that, you're doing actually pretty well. Um, because these are the averages. Here's the other interesting thing. Three out of four users who actually sign up do so within 75 seconds. So one out of five sign up, but of everybody who signs up, most of them sign up within 75 seconds. So, you know, you, you want to shorten that cycle. The more and more you, you complicate it, there are like 10 steps, forms to fill, more and more uh, complexity, you will lose out on this. So, so think about this, people have downloaded their app, they want to sign up, make it as seamless as possible. Um, and again, the shorter you can make it, the more chances you have to get users to sign up, which is actually the most important thing. A simple case study movie, uh, Columbia, uh, it's, a, it's a payment credit card kind of a fintech, um, about five to eight million uh, monthly active users today, growing fast. Um, by doing some of these things, 36% increase or reduction really in, in, in like new user churn. So increase signups by a significant margin by doing some of these simple things up front in the process as soon as the user downloads the, downloads the app. Second phase is if you get a bunch of your users to, to sign up and now you want them to actually transact, do convert, do the things that you want them to do in the app by which you make money and your company makes money. Um, let's look at some data. So 95% of customers through the best fintech companies complete their first transaction in month one. So again, this is, this is about like of everybody who's, who's transacting, 95% of them do so within the first month. So that's a way to think about this. It takes seven days for 76% of customers to transact after sign up. So again, like you have two variables here. You have a conversion rate and you have the time to convert. And these are two variables or two key metrics that you should be monitoring in your app. If your time to convert is actually less than seven days, you're doing remarkably well. And if your, time, if your conversion rate is, is more or close to 95%, you're doing phenomenally well. So again, the idea here is that you, you analyze drop-offs, you intercept drop-offs, you you time them, people who, who are beyond seven days after sign up, not yet transacted, your chances, you know, you can, you can sort of push them or nudge them to get them to transact and do, you know, do what you want them to do because they're most likely not going to do it on their own. So again, the whole thing here is about 
key interventions and how you can enable the user or nudge the user along to, to actually do what you want to do, want them to do. Repeat transactions play a big part. You know, once a, a user or a customer is hooked on to doing a transaction, your chances significantly go up uh, of a repeat transaction. And again, it's about nudges. It's about maybe some offers. It's about, um, you know, identifying these users and taking them on a journey that, that incentivizes the second, the third transaction, and so on. 15% uh, of customers complete more than one transaction within the first week. So... I mean, within the first week of their first transaction. So again, if you don't see these numbers, so you know, 85% is the missing user base, they are not going to transact typically again. So you should get them to transact and work on them to transact is the, uh, you know, by using you, by user engagement, by messaging, by offers, by incentivizing, by just staying on top of their lifecycle journey um, and, and increase that possibility. Guru, I don't know, people have heard of Guru. Uh, it's a trading app. Uh, it's actually a, a US-based trading app, um, about 20 million monthly active users. Um, again, by identifying users who don't transact and, and sort of working on them for repeat transactions, for repeat trades, et cetera, significant increase in, in, uh, in repeat transactions, in cross-selling, but cross-selling is just in their world trading another uh, stock or whatever. So there is, uh, you, again, you work on users that, are, that you know are not going to do it is one of the best practices that they've used to see significant increase uh, in there. And the last phase here is about maximizing engagement. You know, this is about how many users in your app are you able to get uh, more frequently uh, to have them do more sessions a month and so on and so forth. Um, and again, there are two things here. There is only about 20 to 22% of users, of your monthly active users, who come in daily into your app. Now, daily is hard. It obviously depends on what your app is about. Um, but, you know, this is called a sticky quotient. Your daily active users divided by your monthly active users. That ratio is your sticky quotient. And it, it's, a, it's a sense of how sticky your app is. And, um, and the more sticky your app is, the better it is. So how do you get people in daily? Uh, is something that you think about and, you know, and, and messaging comes a big way uh, into this, whether it's email, whether it's push notifications, no matter what. And again, targeting to, to not bother the people who are already doing it daily is key to success here. So you, you want to get users, you don't want to bother users who are coming in daily, but you want to get users who have not come for a while into the app uh, through some smart personalized messaging. So a lot of reminders come into play here, a lot of um, uh, sort of timely personalized messages uh, come into play here uh, and so on. This thing is a little broken, but 11 sessions per month uh, is what your best users tend to do. That's a big number. And again, uh, if you are getting close to that for majority of, use, of your users, it's actually very, very good. If you're not getting there, then there's, then there's ways to go. And, um, and again, uh, offers come into play here. Uh, information comes into play here. Quick releases, if you're releasing more and more services, one of the, one of the you know, some of the best fintech, app, fintech apps release more and more features, services as they go along. And, and informing your users about that stuff plays a key role in getting them back into uh, doing multiple sessions with you. Paytm, I don't know if you've heard of Paytm. This is a fintech based out of India, actually. Uh, about 100 million users, massive scale, lots of services from payments to, um, to all kinds of loyalty programs, all kinds of different things, actually. Um, and they run like, you know, about 30 business units, use that same user data to to you know to personalize offers to um, to almost anticipate what uh, the user needs by using predictive segmentation by using um, some AI and and all of that's you know those kind of things so again a lot of um, scale here because of multiple services that are provided 
and getting those services in front of the right user at the right time in the right context. Um, it's a big app. It's actually a public company. Um, it's, it's growing very, very fast. So at the end of the day, you know, the, the truth here uh, is that there is no shortcut to this. It's, it's good to know data. We have published uh, uh, a fintech benchmark study. It's available at our booth. I think it's available as you walk out maybe. Um, if you want, it's in Spanish and, and English, whichever version you prefer. Um, and you can, you can pick that up. It has a lot more data. It has a lot more stats and some case studies about um, what fintech apps do to do this. But at the end of the day, it is about meaningful relationships with your customers. It is about um, anticipating their needs. It's about uh, you know, getting in front of them uh, at the right time with the right context. It's about reminding them. It's about incentivizing them. It's about uh, sort of exciting them to come back uh, into, your, uh, into your app again and again. Uh, understand them, optimize them, engage with them throughout the life cycle. You do need a lot of data. You do need a lot of ability to segment your users, to identify your um, loyal customers, to identify your inactive users, to identify based on even a simple recency frequency uh, analysis, who's coming in, who's not, uh, and then engaging with them based on what segment they lie in um, is the secret to, to success. So use a lot of data, track your users, um, and get in front of them uh, with 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 the right thing, so that's a quick short thing. Uh, we are we have a booth, uh, you know, in the expo section. Uh, come there, talk to us, uh, the teams here, um, and and you can pick up the the report if you want to. I can take some questions, maybe. Zing, Sunil, thank you so much. Thank you.